Hello everyone and welcome back to some more Warhammer Underworlds. Today on the boards that you can see in front of you, we are going to have the Far Striders going up against Black Powder's Buccaneers. And there isn't much else to say, we'll take a look at both sides, we'll get them on the table and we'll see what happens. So we have the Far Striders over here, our three Stormcast Eternals that are being led by Sanson Far Strider himself. He is the one with the bird on his hand, or wrist I guess, gauntlet. To his back left we have Omric Eagle Eye, and to his back right over here we have Ellis Swiftblade. Elias, sorry, is it? It's E-L-L -L or E-L-I-S, yes, Elias Swiftblade. All these very, very normal and very easy to say names. And their inspire condition is that they have to do two different types of attacks in the same phase. And over here we have Black Powder himself, Gorlock Black Powder to be exact. He is the big ogre leading this pirate troop. We have his bird Shriek, or Shrek, however you want to say it. I'll just say the bird, um, much like that. We also have his monkey who has a knife. Do not go near him. And then we have his two little minions. We have KG, which is the one at the back there with the ropes. And then we have Pegs here, which is kind of like the boss one pointing with the peg leg. And he's kind of in charge of all the little ones. So not a super strong warband this one, but they have been errated a little bit to be a little bit better. Uh, we'll see if that makes a difference today. This video is sponsored by Noble Knight Games. Check out the video description below for an affiliate link that will take you through to their store and it will help me out as well. Thanks. And after that brief word from our channel sponsor, we are back with both sides deployed and we can just quickly go over who's where. Sanson is right here, then we have Elias Swiftblade down at the bottom and then in the middle we have Ulmeric Eagle Eye and then on the right side we have Black Powder himself front and centre. He is a chonky ogre after all so he's got six health so he is pretty tanky but it does kind of resolve, revolve rather all around him and then we have his crew behind him in the various starting locations. They are going first and all that remains is to flip over the objectives for the benefit of you watching at home. So we have one and three, that was the two that the Far Striders had. And then we have four, five, six, all over here. And that is the high, uh, sorry, two I mean. <laughs> I forgot there was only five. It's one of those days, again, over here. Uh, apologies if you do hear like any kind of sniffles or anything, just getting over uh, a cold or, or something. But hopefully not going to affect things too much. Cards are drawn. We are ready to get started into round one of three. Black Powder's Buccaneers going first. So it was a rather busy first activation for Black Powder's Buccaneers to get the game started. We'll handle it in parts. So it was his bird Shriek Shrek, whatever you want to call it, that activated. And he did a charge action, which is a super action. It's a move and an attack mixed together. He did the move part, putting himself adjacent to Elias Swiftblade, which then triggered the monkey's reaction, which is, it doesn't have a name, it's just a reaction. After a friendly minion makes a move action, pushed his fire up to three hexes. After the push, he has to be within two hexes of the other minion. So he followed along, basically, because they started adjacent to each other. So that means he was originally there. Stuff happened. We'll get to it. So the bird then initiated an attack, managed to do very well, looking for swords on three dice, got swords and a crit, and... Uh, would have needed a crit and even then it still would have got through on the defense roll and it only does one damage normally but it has grievous one so because of that crit the grievous kicks in and he actually did two damage to elias which is half his health then it came to the power phase so that's where we have to handle some stuff gold rush was played by black powder's buccaneers choose up to two friendly fires other than your leader push them up to two hexes towards the closest feature token i.e objectives in this case uh, in enemy territory so both little goblins have been pushed forwards two hexes basically towards that because that's the closest one that isn't in their territory and it's three is the one behind that which is roughly in the same line so that's where they got pushed towards it's just a small move to get them further up the field for first riders fearsome roar was played choose an enemy fighter adjacent to one or more friendly fighters push them one hex the monkey was pushed away one hex to deny any support here for their first activation. Not done yet though, as I say it was a long turn. Another power card, or another card rather played in the power phase for Black Powder's Buccaneers, Flurry of Claws. Choose one friendly companion, the chosen fighter makes one attack action on their fire card. Now you'll notice there's no other dice here, they've already been rolled out and the poor bird did not get a single success. 
and he would have needed, well, even if he'd got a basic hit through, wouldn't have killed Elias, which would have been catastrophic if one of the three went down turn one. But such as it is, the card was wasted, no damage done. I think that covered everything. Wow, both sides are coming out swinging. This could end up being a super short one just because of how bloodthirsty both sides are and how successful they've been at it. So, we have the first activation for the Forest Raiders. Once again, it was a long turn, so bear with me. Elias Swiftblade activated the one who is half dead right here. She started, or they started, by using their, um, what's it called, Storm Snare. Three dice looking for swords due to the number of dice available had to use them elsewhere. The third dice was a miss. Uh, sorry, not the Storm Snare. Yeah, I do mean, their Storm Saber, sorry, yes. Three dice looking for swords for two damage. Got a crit and a success. The other one was discarded because it was used for a second roll that we'll get to in a second. Was not blocked. We needed a crit. So that is two damage to the bird, which means the bird is not the word because it is dead. And that is one glory. Did not stop there though because Merciless Assault then kicked in. It's a reaction card. Play this after a friendly fighter's successful range one attack action. They make a range three plus attack action. So Elias cracked out her Boltstorm pistol, range three, three dice for one damage, and shot that into the monkey. Also getting a crit, um, which he did not block, because he needed a crit to block. It has stagger on crits as well, so it only does one damage, so he's still alive, but that is one damage and stagger done there. And because she has done two attacks in the same phase, that means that she inspires. Now she doesn't get any more HP on her flip side. Her defense roll becomes two dice. So there is a chance it might keep her alive a bit longer. But we're still not done. In the power phase, because that was a reaction still during the normal phase, Raptor Strike was played. So you pick a target within four hexes of Sanson Forest Rider and they just take one damage. So one damage has been done. He's hard to see because of black powder in the way. One damage to Pegs, leaving him with one health remaining. Grand Theft was played by the Buccaneers in the same power phase. The first range one attack action made by a friendly fire in the next activation has Ensnare. That's not super relevant because um, they don't use dodges to defend, but it's the second part that's more important. Uh, gain one swag counter after resolving that attack action. That's the important part because they need to work with swag. Uh, that's kind of their whole thing. So I think that covered everything. They've gained one glory for the kill on the bird. Um, they did not spend it. And yeah, that, that's it. Well, he did plan originally to activate later in the turn, but he can't stand for that. So Gorlog Black Powder himself activated and did a charge, moving his three hexes down here so he avoided Elias getting supported by Ulmeric Eagle Eye. Took a swing with his gigantic cutlass, looking for hammers. He only got the one. And despite being on their inspired side and just needing a single shield or crit, they managed to whiff it. And that means the head comes clean off and Elias Swiftblade is not so swift anymore. So she is dead. That is one glory gained. And more importantly, just because of how their mechanics work, thanks to that Grand Theft card that was played, that is a swag counter given to Black Powder. He starts the game with one, so that means he has two. That's relevant for how he inspires. He has to use them, though, uh, or discard them. There's a few different ways you can discard them. Uh, but, but that is at least setting him on the right path. And, yeah, that's a third of the Forest Riders Strand Gone in two activations. The second activation for the Forest Riders was Forest Rider himself. Sanson activated and did a charge. He can move four hexes, which is one more than his friends. And he moved them all the way into enemy territory up there because of the machinations he has. And then he initiated his ranged attack, which is the Bolt Storm Pistol, up to three hexes away, three dice looking for swords for a single point of damage. He got very lucky. He got two successes. He shot the crossbow bolt or whatever into Pegs' back. He did not dodge it, and he already lost one health from that power card last time, or power phase card. So, bleh, stabs him in the back takes him out and gives them their second glory but it actually gives them their third glory because it also scores the judgment of sigmar which will hopefully come into focus any second now there we go surge score this immediately after a friendly fighter's range three plus attack action 
takes a target out of action. It did. So now it is 3 glory to 1. Team Monkey activated and did a charge action to go after Ulmeric Eagle Eye and the minions have been doing really well in getting those crits. He was looking for swords on 3 dice, he got 1 crit, 1 success. Uh, did get a success on the block, doesn't matter though because the crit trumps that and much like the bird he also has Grievous so instead of doing just one flat damage it has done two which is half his health gone. No power cards or no cards in the power phase rather, no objective cards, that's it. Well speaking of Eagle Eye he had to be the next one to activate second last activation in the first round for Sansons Forest Riders. He did a charge, it went around the monkey that just attacked him with the knife it's wielding and tried to shoot his crossbow bolt, his um, what is it called, he's got a charged pistol actually, into the back of the monkey, rolling three dice, needing swords, he got what would have been in most cases a fantastic close combat roll, but when you're looking for swords you don't want to be seeing three hammers, so he absolutely whiffed and that could cost him badly. Had he have managed to secure that kill, because the monkey's only got one health left as well, that would have set them up really nicely. And we're staying over here, last activation of the first round for Black Powder's Buccaneers was KG. He did a charge action to try and attack Omer Eagle Eye in the back and he got a crit. These little guys are just rolling all the crits. Although, thankfully, a defense roll went the first rider's way this time and he also rolled a crit. So the uh, double support is not a success, there's no one helping him. So, yep, they cancel each other out and no damage done. It all just went from bad to worst for Ulmerk Eagle Eye. He took the last activation in the first round for the Forest Riders. He decided to try and finish what he started with trying to kill that monkey. And once again, his roll contained no successes of any type. Single support and two double supports, all irrelevant based on where he is. He's surrounded by the enemy and he can't just shoot a monkey. So unfortunately for him, that takes us to the end of the first round with him failing twice in a row. So at the end of round one, the Black Powder's Buccaneers are down one little Goblin Gretchen, whatever they're called in Warhammer Fantasy, and one murderous bird, but they do have a little monkey with a knife that miraculously has survived two crossbow bolt assaults. For Sansons Forest Riders, uh, despite being inspired, Elias Swiftblade is gone, but for all the messing up that Eagle Eye did, they're actually scoring two cards in the end phase. They're scoring Flash of Light for one, which is, as it comes into focus, bear with it, there we go. Scorbus in the end phase of one or more friendly fighters are each in an edge hex in enemy territory. That is why Sanson moved to where he did at the very top of your screen. That is an edge hex in enemy territory for one. And thanks to Eagle Eye not dying, he has at least done something useful. He scored Prime Objective for one as well which is Scorvus in the end phase if a friendly fighter is holding the highest valued objective in enemy territory, which he is. That is objective five. The other objective in enemy territory is two and objective four is in no man's land. So there are two more points up, meaning as we go into round two, they're, they're pulling ahead. It's five to the forest riders playing just one for Black Powder's Buccaneers. So as we open into the top of round two, Black Powder's Buccaneers are taking first activation, which might be important because I think that Black Powder has a very real possibility of murdering Eagle Eye, which is really what he deserves after the tail end of the first turn. But let's see what happens. Well, that's precisely what happened, wasn't it? Black Powder activated, he stayed where he was, he used his Grunderbuss, which uses swag counters for ammo, so he discarded the one he has earned from the previous turn via the, uh, whatever it was called, and he rolls three dice, he's looking for swords, he didn't get any of those, but he did get a single support, which is a success because KG is adjacent to his target, and he got a crit. Uh, Eagle Eye managed to roll a crit for his defense again, but thanks to that success counting, uh, sorry, that support rather, counting as a success, it hits him, it does two damage, and he is out of there for their second glory. So they're still quite behind, even though there's now only Sanson left. One of those glory is being spent in the power phase to equip scavenged shot onto Black Powder. It just means if he's standing on an objective token, he doesn't need to expend ammo to use his Grunderbuss, but it does one less damage. Just a simple upgrade for no other reason than there's nothing else better to spend it on. So it's just Sanson now, but they do still have a point advantage, so um, we'll see how it goes, because honestly it's really, really difficult for Black Powder to do anything if 
the other side just refuses to spend glory on upgrades. Well, Sanson wanted some blood after that, so he did the charge action onto Objective 4 in No Man's Land and fired his Boltstorm pistol at the monkey to prove that it isn't so hard to hit him. Three dice needing swords, he got a crit. No crit in the defense roll of the monkey, so yes, he is out of there. And that is their sixth glory earned. And only poor KG left for the minions of Black Powder. But, not over there. Warning Cry was then used, which is actually quite funny because he's the sole survivor, so it doesn't really make much sense, but you can still use it. Choose a friendly fighter, he chooses himself. Give the chosen fighter one guard token. Hey Sanson, watch out, that guy might attack you. Thanks Sanson, I'll be sure to watch out for that attack. So he is now on guard. What followed was leader on leader violence as Black Powder activated again and used his Grunderbuss again, discarding his final swag token in the process. So it does a few things, but first of all, look at the staggeringly good roll he got. Two crits and another success. Even if Sanson had rolled a crit, couldn't do anything against that, so that's just two damage dealt to him of his four health, which is pretty nasty. But for discarding his second swag token in the same phase, or in the same attack phase, I think it is, either way, Black Powder inspires. He gets plus one movement and plus one dying Grunderbuss attacks on his inspired side. He also scored broadside for one glory. Surge scores immediately after your leader's second or subsequent Grunderbuss attack action in the same phase. So, as just explained, that's him firing it twice in the same uh, phase. So, that scored for one, taking him to a total of three. In the power phase, they're not doing anything else. However, Sanson is playing cease, uh, yeah, Ceaseless Volley, so he is moving. Choose a friendly fighter, push the chosen fighter one hex, and then he gets plus one extra die to his range three plus attack action in the following activation. He is pushing himself here, so that... Uh, was it here? No, hang on. One, two, three. Sorry, there. It's so that he is within three of KG to shoot at him, but outside of three of uh, Blackbeard. Not that he has any ammo left anyway. But if he moves on to an Objective X, he can use the scavenge shot. So because of the number of dice involved, we're going to have to do Sanson's next activation across two cuts. The first attack, or rather first activation, he's done a charge action, so he can only either attack or move. And he is doing his range... 3 Boltstorm Pistol into KG. He was getting an extra dive from the Ceaseless Volley card he played and he got a single crit through, which did get through. No Grievous or anything like that on it though, so just does one flat damage to KG. But he's not done yet because in the power phase he's playing Rapid Volley. Now this is only get, going to get 3 dice but had to do this roll separately. In fact, we might, could just do it on camera of course. Play this after a friendly fighter's range 3 plus attack action. That fighter makes a range 3 plus attack action that targets the same fighter. This is his effort to attempt to kill KG. And he got a crit again, which uh, is not going to be easy to block. And no matter how you cut that, it's either a double support or a dodge. So yeah, that would go through for another one damage. And that would take KG out for another glory. No cards scored on that, but that is their seventh glory. And now it comes down to just Sanson and Black Powder. Well, Black Powder decided to do a charge action on his inspired side, he can move four hexes. He did so. He's also got such a large cut list that he can attack from two hexes away, which is what he did, which is why he's there. Two dice needing hammers, and unfortunately for him, he actually early whiffed the roll. Whoops, I just knocked that to a crit, but obviously it wasn't. There we go. So, no damage there. He's still got one activation left, but uh, Sanson is at least going to get to pepper him with some bolts. But he's got six health, so that's not going to do too much. Yeah, get used to this camera angle. I think we're going to see it a lot. So Sanson fired his bolt pistol, whatever it's called in Warhammer parlance. I always forget, bolt storm pistol. Getting a crit. A lot of crits this game in general. Black Powder didn't block it. Woo, one whole damage. It, it's a start, but I, there's literally not enough time left in the game if he only does one damage a turn. Well, rather interestingly, Black Powder did not go in for another attack from where he was. He actually did a move action and moved on to objective three over here. And that is where he is leaving off the second round, not doing anything else. And with little recourse for what else he can do, given that Black Powder was too far away to attack, Farsider activated, did a move action, and has come to rest on Objective 4 in No Man's Land. And that takes us to the end phase for the second round. Well, despite being down to their last man, and their last man being half dead, 
the Farsiders are still kind of running away with it. They are scoring two in the end phase via swift work. Right here into focus, there we go. Scorebus in the end phase if the number of enemy fighters out of action is greater than the round number, e.g. three in round two. Well, it is the end of round two and there's four dead, so that has scored for two, taking them to two, four, six, eight, nine. Nine glory. Now, uh, Black Powder is actually scoring a card. He is scoring Aspiring Tyrant for one. Scorebus in the end phase if your leader is on a feature token in enemy territory. Don't need to worry about it or condition because the first part is true so that is their fourth glory so as we go into the final round with one person standing on both sides nine is playing four let's see who's getting first activation well after roll offs it will be the far striders taking first activation the odds are against them if <laughs> black powder lands just a single hit on him he's dead but that doesn't necessarily mean it'll make much of a difference because they're so far ahead points wise Let's see what happens. Well, Sanson stayed where he was and fired that Bolt Storm pistol, range 3, looking for swords. And he got himself a crit, which was not blocked by a crit from Black Powder. One more damage to him. He's got four health left. But that does actually score Veteran Marksman for one glory, bringing them to ten. Scorbus immediately after a friendly fighter's range 3 plus attack action, that resulted in a crit. And now, thanks to everyone else being dead on Black Powder's side, he can spend on upgrades without fear of it getting swiped and giving uh, chances to score cards. So two glory have been spent in total in the power phase for Crackling Blade and Watchful Advance upgrades that Santon is obviously giving himself. Uh, the, the reaction from Watchful Advance is after this fighter's activation in which it made one or more move actions, he goes on guard. Crackling Blade is his range 1 attacks gain Grievous and Stagger. Well, all it took was one activation for Black Powder. He did a charge, he got right up in Sanson's face, took a swing with that giant cutlass, got a crit, which was not blocked by a crit. Two damage, sorry, three damage, which is more than enough that no amount of upgrades is saving Sanson. So that is one glory gained there. It doesn't immediately end, that's not the way Underworlds work. Uh, we can play on because objective cards can still score even if you've been wiped off the table. And they're actually winning. In the power phase though, Black Powder is buying two upgrades for himself, he's spending two glory, doesn't really matter what they're doing at this point, the point is he's uh, equipping them. So he's got Pointy Bits and Legendary Lure. So we'll probably just quickly go through the turns now because I imagine it's going to be repositioning and cycling cards trying to look for things it can score. So we'll cover anything important that happens and then just go to the end phase. Yep, so literally every other activation for both sides was cycling objective cards. I believe in the newest box set that just released it, that action now has a new name, but it's ostensibly the same thing. You draw an objective card, you discard an objective card. So they both did that to get their hands into a place where they could potentially do things in the end phase. So with that, we're going into the end phase and seeing if Black Powder can pull out enough <laughs> glory to even the odds. And here we are of the final hand of objective cards, the, well, now all dead first Riders had, they don't score a single thing. So their final score is as it was already, which is 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 on the dot. Black Powder has 5, so he needs to find 5 glory to draw. And from all that swapping out objective cards, he might have a chance. He is scoring, let's see, Tall Tales for 1. Scorbus in the end phase if one or more enemy fighters with a wound characteristic of five or more is out of action or one or more surviving friendly fighters each have three or more upgrades. He has three upgrades. So that scores for one of the five he needs to get a draw. He scores Bold Tails for two. Scorbus in the end phase if three or more friendly fighters are on feature tokens. Nope. Or three or more enemy fighters are out of action. Exactly three are out of action. So that scores for two. Did he find the last two to make it a draw? Because let's face it, three is very unlikely. And the answer is, he found one with smash and grab. Scorbus in the end phase, if one or more of your opponent's upgrade cards was broken, nope. Or one or more enemy fighters who each have two or more upgrades are out of action. Sanson gave himself two upgrades. So that did score for one. Meaning, of the five he needed to make it a draw, he did in the last moments manage to put together four. That doesn't mean much though because it's still a loss. 10 to the Forest Riders, 9 to Black Powder's 
Buccaneers. Although, he is also the last man standing, so in a manner of speaking he won, but when it comes down to the points, he did not. And with that, that is going to do it for another Warhammer Underworlds video. Thank you very much for watching to the end. If you did, please do remember to like and subscribe. And if you would like to support what we do here on the channel just in general, please consider becoming a channel member, pressing the thanks button, or checking out the channel sponsor. If you pick something up for yourself via my affiliate link to my channel sponsor, I will be compensated. So we both get something out of it, which would be very nice. Thank you for watching. See you in the future for something else. And until then, ta-ta for now.